down to go out there and ball. Oh, yeah. Listen to that talk in that huddle. He wants them going out there with some intensity. It's an all-Western Conference matchup in today's game as the Timberwolves come into town for this one. 2K Sports is proud to present NBA Basketball. Alongside Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Harlan. And now a quick check of our starting lineups for both teams. And guys, what are you going to be looking for in this one from favorites? Well, Kevin, he's capable of dominating every individual matchup physically. He's got incredible strength, and sometimes it's hard to really see on TV, but... You know, when he's on the floor, he gets after you, and you have to be ready to play. And another thing he's known for all over the league is what an angry shot blocker he is. He does it with an attitude when he knocks it out of the air and sends it behind the shooter. It goes without saying, with Ennis Kenner back in good health, they are extremely excited to see him on the floor. It's good for money. Did you see the defense get caught standing around that time, giving up an easy second chance bucket. Simply need more of an effort on the boards there, Steve. Now, here's Burke. He really had an off night against the Timberwolves, never really got the rhythm. Here's Burks, and he lays it straight in. You don't need much range to hit from that distance, Kevin. And now, just over a minute played here in the first. Now, here's Rubio, covered by Burke. Outside, Martin. Here's Money. He's covered by Favors. No good for Money. A big part of, you know, why people are patient with the offensive development of Derek Favors is that he's young, for one, but he's also already a very good defender in the post. A strong frame and long arms allow him to do that. Stupendous rush to the rim and a mighty slam on the end of it. But through the teeth of some pretty soft D, I can't help but say that. Well, let's see how that impacts things here, because those kinds of plays sometimes can be game changers on both sides. We're just about two minutes into the first quarter. And Clark, you mentioned the long arms of Derek Favors, six foot ten, but that seven foot four arm span, wingspan. Steve, do you think he's more of a power forward or, or a center? Well, I think the positions have basically been blurred uh, in the league the last few years. Uh, he can guard both positions. I think on offense, he's best served staying around the hoop. And as he continues to develop his moves down there, little hooks and, and counter moves, uh, I think you can see him play the center role pretty easily. If you're just tuning in, we played about two and a half minutes here in the first. Or kicks to Favors. Here's Burks. Gets the 14-footer to fall. The entire defense was frozen-footed. Nobody picked up the shooter, Kevin. The Minnesota Timberwolves come into this one after the win against the Utah Jams. And what that game came down to, guys, was their ability to, to use that three-point shot so effectively. The work they did on the perimeter was absolutely outstanding. Way too much for that defense to be able to handle. Here's Burke after the made shot from Money. Burke, the pass to Fabers. He dishes it to Burke. A floater, and the layup is good. That's such a feel shot, that floater over the top. For Minnesota, they've gone 5 of 7 today so far. Nice shooting to get this game underway. To the paint, here's Money. Uses the glass to finish the layup. Money's got 10 points. And they're beginning to fall apart a little bit defensively, especially inside. Well, that's four straight buckets now at the rim. Burke dishes to Hayward. Passes to Cannon. Nice ball movement by Utah. Hayward with the ball. Picked up by Love. Boy, he shows a lot of desire when he's fighting for that tough board. And his length doesn't hurt either. Martin attacking. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. Yeah, the defender draped all over him. Pretty plain and simple. Got him good there. The Timberwolves shooting their first free throws of the night right here. Big group substitution now for Minnesota. And so Martin nails both of them. Well, you kind of expect that from him. You pretty much know what the result's going to be when he goes to the line. Now let's go over to Doris Burke, who was able to talk with Tyrone Corbett. And 
Kevin, I asked him what he thought would be a key factor for them coming into this game, and he said, well, our length and shot blocking should help. It gives offenses something to think about when they come inside the lane, and oftentimes that tentativeness can be a game changer. Guys, every team in the league wants that interior presence, and he just explained one big reason why. Doris, thank you. It'll be interesting to see how that defensive mindset serves them here in the first half. Yeah, it will be, Kevin, because if they come out uh, with the right frame of mind and they don't have much success early, you know, the game plan's going to have to change in a big hurry. And even so, Steve, I think the defensive approach Doris talked about is exactly the one they should employ. Here's Burke after the made shot from Monday. Just five to shoot. And that one's good. Burke. Burke's got his second bucket of the night. For the Utah Jazz, they come in off a loss to Minnesota. Yeah, I thought their defense in that game was about as shaky as it could be. At home, you know, that kind of defense isn't going to cut it. Never mind if you're on the road. They really look tired to me, and I don't know if they had travel issues or if they were out too late, but something was amiss because they had no energy. With the points he's racked up in the paint, he's taking some pressure off of their perimeter shooting. On the wing, Williams. Not loose. Here's Beadrench. From down in the low post, it goes. There's 42 seconds left in the first quarter. Williams passes to Money. Kicks it to Pekovic. Down low, Money. Good tee by Williams. Jazz trail by six. Out left to the wing. Here's Burke. Minnesota with the rebound. Last time they met was in Minnesota. You know, that last game I thought was a, an evenly played game, but the difference was the big discrepancy in the free throw percentage in their favor. That, that's what helped them win. They get it back. And it's Pekovic missing. And that concludes the first quarter of play. The Timberwolves on top. Now the second quarter getting ready to start up. And let's take a moment here to get your guys' take on scoring so far for the Timberwolves. They've been very good in the low post. I'm sure they'll be looking to continue that as the game wears on. And they're also showing some muscle here in the first half, finding a lot of points in the paint area. Burks the off guard with Hayward at the three. Jeremy Evans is out there with Rudy Gobert. And it's Lucas in at the one spot. That's the group right now for Utah. You know, you look at the flex offense that Utah utilizes, and it requires that players, one, be versatile and multi-skilled, but also that they have good basketball IQs. You need to be able to screen and read defenses effectively. And uh, that's not easy, but it's certainly a good way to play if you've got the right people. He is feeling it. A terrific percentage from the field. Lucas off a pick from Burks. Here's Hayward, and it's sent back by Brewer, and he's able to get it back. Here's Burks. Here's Evans. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. And a look at the top single season player efficiency ratings. I love this statistic. Wilt Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. And we've got some more modern talent representing as well. Yeah, you're talking the elites of the game when you go down that list. Interesting to see a, a new school stat kind of juxtaposed with the old school legends, but you know, the, the rankings obviously make sense if those guys are at the top. Here's Money. And Brewer kicks to Shved. Feeds to Love. To the middle. And you can count it. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it three. And Clark, back to that flex offense you were talking about. Some players come into the league with the bad habit of standing around when they don't have the ball. Steve, that's not going to cut it in the flex. No, it keeps you moving. It keeps the ball going. Uh, a lot of screening and cutting. It's a great offense, and it's difficult to cover. And I like what you said. It, it teaches the young players how to play as well. And the basket by Rubio. You know, when he's in that tight with that kind of height advantage over the defender, that's going to be a pretty easy play for him. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Yes, Kevin. During that last break, I heard Rick Adelman as he addressed his team. He wants them looking for passing lanes and getting the ball into the painted area. It sounds like if they can make this a battle of the bigs, he'd be very happy. 
also told them they need a strong presence on the defensive glass. He does not want second chance points to be their downfall. They're not going to wait for halftime. They want those adjustments to have an impact right away. Over to you, Kevin. And as always, Doris, thank you. Tell you what, that was all made possible by the heads up defense at the other end. Yeah, you got to love the energy they're bringing. As soon as they got their hands on the ball, everybody got out and ran. Here's Money. Boy, he was something else against Utah. Here's Brewer. And he's good on the three ball. Brewer's got five points so far. I'm not sure that was the play they had set up, but it was too good a look to pass up. Lucas dishes to Burks. We're just over two and a half minutes into the second quarter. But they recover it. Cantor, the pass to Lucas. Favors against Love. Another shot. Rebound Love. Timberwolves leading by nine. And Rubio kicks to Love. Back to Rubio. Nice ball movement by Minnesota. Here's Money defended by Cantor. Pass to Money. Wide open. That's in. Coming off an assist from Rubio. And that's now 21 points for Money. Well, he's a spot-up shooter, one of the best. One of those guys who, if you give him an inch, I mean, that's all it takes. He will let it fly and frequently knock down that shot. And I also really like his skill as a low-post passer guy. He sees the whole court and doesn't hesitate to pass up his own shot if he can get the ball to a teammate for a better look. Now Rubio. After the missed three from Lucas, Schved the pass to Money. No good. Nice D from Hayward. Jazz trail by 11. Clark, some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, they need a basket just to regain some momentum here, Kevin. Lucas dishes to Hayward. Lucas kicks to Hayward. Another miss by Utah. That's a tough one there because he's wide open. That's a shot he expects to make. Well, it's amazing when you think about it. Gordon Hayward was only 5 foot 10 inches tall his freshman year in high school. He's one of those players who grew up playing guard and then had a late growth spurt. And as you often see, he brought that guard skill level along with the additional inches as he grew. And the Jazz with possession here after the miss from Shved. Burks can't get it to go. 119 left now here in the second. And Rubio kicks to Shved. The pass to Money. He feeds it to Love. And there's the call on Gordon Hayward. That's his first foul. And going back to Gordon Hayward. He said, and that concludes the first half. Tim. Well, I'm alongside Coach Tyrone Corbin and Coach Alon. Now, presented by Sprint. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday night. I'm Dave. The Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. And as we welcome you back, we begin our second half. So far, not a tightly contested game, guys, but you know, anything can happen. What a game we're seeing from Money. How about his scoring in the first half? I mean, he's looked like a different player out there today. He really has, Steve. It's been a pleasant surprise for him, that's for sure. I mean, he really hit on something that worked in those first two quarters. Third quarter action getting rolling right now. Brought to you by Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Here's who's on the floor. So on the floor for Minnesota. Rubio and Martin Manning the backcourt. Corey Brewer is out there with money, and it's Love in at the center, filling out the middle. Here's Rubio after the made shot from Hayward. Here's Money. Here's Love, and a good offensive board, and he gets the bucket. Love's got his first two points of the night. He was the first one to react to that miss. Excellent anticipation on his part. A hustle play on the putback by him. Burke, the pass to Burks. Now here's Burke, covered by Rubio. That shot wide open. Burks has got 11 points. No matter who it is, that kind of defense is not going to cut it. And Rubio kicks to Martin. Money passes to Love, and it's sent back by Kendrick. 
and we're just about a minute and a half into the third quarter of basketball. There's the dish to Burks. Cantor with it. He's going up against Love. Cantor kicks to Burks. Here's Burke. Had a chance there to cut it to single digits, but it's off target. Well, an eight rebound advantage like the one they have now is always going to swing the score hard in that team's direction. And that's certainly been the case today. Their rebounding has made a huge difference. Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. Well, guys, money in the last outing against the Jazz really lit it up. He finished with 28 points, and he was on target the whole contest. Very few misses from him all night. He had a great game in all facets, and his coach called it a complete game of basketball. High praise to be sure, guys. And thank you, Doris. It was a performance that has to have their upcoming opponents terrified, Clark. Well, I know this opponent should be terrified because there's a good chance the momentum he gathered that night carries right over into this game. Well, some of it will carry over. That's inevitable. It's just a matter of how much. Now, here's Burks after the miss from Monday. Favors with the ball. Averaging 14 points a game. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. Ricky Rubio picks one up. Obvious foul. Yeah, he took a hit right there and earned those free throws. The Jazz shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. J.J. Beret has checked in for Mark. And so Favors nails both of them. Timberwolves leading by 10. Passes it to Money. Lots of room. And he drops that one in. Money's got 23. You know, it seems like when they've gone to him, he's really come through. And that's not something they should get away from. And the Jazz call time here. We've seen Money really having a great game. But he's getting to the rack all game, and if they can't do a better job of keeping him out of the paint, they're in for a long night. And Utah making a change here. Evans has checked in. Now here's Burke. He has six. Has to go bare. He kicks it to Burks. And he gets it to go. Burks has got five points in the quarter. You know, he's knocking down his shots today, but it hasn't really translated to the scoreboard yet. You know, Burks is a shooting guard by trade, but last season, guys, he showed that he could handle the ball and run a team in a pinch. Not something you'd want him doing all the time, but it's nice to have that as a plan B or C if you need it. And it's good. 25 points for money. He's their go-to guy. When he shoots the ball like he has today, that's what the scoreboard usually looks like. There's the pass to Gobert. Fires from deep. And he drills it. Beautiful release there from Burke. Burke's got it back down to a single-digit deficit for the Jams. And Burke's very quick and very athletic, even standing 6'6". He's able to stay with most point guards defensively. Yeah, a bit of a late bloomer physically going into college in Colorado, but excellent athleticism. And I love the defensive versatility that he provides to their team. And he gets it to go. And now it's 27 points for money. Well, he's found his game in his rhythm this quarter. He's gotten into a nice groove. Evans right side. The feed to Burks. Burke with the screen for Burks. Shot clock at six. Now here's Burke. Not a lot of room. We've seen a noticeable improvement out of him since halftime. He didn't have a whole lot working in the first half. Pass to Money. 106 left to play in the third. Can't hit. And it's Utah the other way. The Wizards on the road to face them after this game. That'll be the second of four games at home for them. That's good. And that's 13 points for Trey Burke. The offense is clicking for him this half. Absolutely clicking. I mean, everything on point and on target. Here's Money, covered by Evans. The jump hook gets it to go. That one good for Money. Money's got 29 in the game. That's the third bucket in a row from the paint. This defense needs to clog those lanes in the middle much more effectively. Yeah, and until they do, the problems inside are only going to get worse. Now Brewer after the miss three from Burke. Brewer with the ball, and Burks picks him up defensively. Love the pass to Money. 
Great pass to set up the lay-in. And now it's an 11-point Timberwolves lead. They are so productive in the low post right now. Eight straight points have come inside the paint. That's bully ball they're playing there. Evan shot is good. Heads up, aggressive play right there. He saw the smaller man on him, took it straight to the basket. I'm deep. Can't connect. And offensively, a great show for the fans. Friday. And it's time now to reveal our State Farm assist for the game. Today, Steve, it's a big man winning the honor. And it was a no-brainer. This assist was really out of this world. I mean, he had a great understanding of the situation and where the ball had to go. Favors plays the four with Canner at the five. Burke is out there with Rush. And it's Jefferson in at the small forward position. That's the group right now for Utah. So it's Minnesota now. Martin, the vast of money. And the rejection by Favors. Now, here's Burke. He's guarded by Williams. Burke dishes to Rush. Pass to Burke. Pocket six. Looking for Favors. He gets it there. Major League big boy throwdown right there. And he keeps a tight grip on that rim after the finish. And maybe that'll give this team a little bit of their edge back. Dishes it to Buttinger. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Here's a look at what's coming up for the Utah Jazz. The Wizards on the road to face them after this game. And that's game two of this string of four games played at home. No doubt the Golden State fans, some of the best in the league, they, they want to see their Warriors win that one. That one misses. Jazz trail by eight. And Rush kicks to Burke. He dishes it to Favors. Gets to the rim for two with the D all over him. Favors got four points now in the quarter. And now both of these clubs really in a groove here. Already a high scoring game, but it has become an offensive showcase down the stretch. Here's Money. He's covered by Favors. The jump hook. That's good. And that's now 33 points for Money. All the buckets he's poured in today have put them in a terrific position heading into the stretch. Utah calls timeout. We've seen Money really having a great game. He's in one heck of a groove with the scoring. They're going to talk it over and try to figure out how to slow him down. And let's get this update now from Doris Burke, who's across the way on the sideline. Hey, guys. Well, Tyrone Corbin had some advice for the team in that last huddle. He told them it's time to fight and take the lead. Let's put ourselves in position to bring it home. Guys, we'll see if they've got what it takes to get it done. Martin with it, now guarded by Burke. Buttinger, the pass to Money. Kicks it to Buttinger. Outside Williams. And that one's good. And now it's a 10-point Timberwolves lead. The Jazz have gone two or three from the field to get the fourth quarter started. Burke kicks to Rush. Feeds it to Burke. Knocks it loose. And Williams with the clear path to the hoop. That's good. Williams has got four points in the quarter. Let's look at the energy stats, how the hustle game has been going for Minnesota. Their high energy defensive effort has paid off for them, guys, with more than a few steals over the course of the ball game. You also can't overlook how well they defended the rim. Because they've challenged virtually every shot in the paint. Love check in for the Timberwolves. A little over two and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth quarter. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Yes, Kevin, during that last break, I heard Rick Adelman as he addressed his team. There was no question what he was most concerned with, their lack of interior defense so far. Protect the rim. That's the priority, quote, unquote. Guys, they're operating under the principle that it's never too late to fine-tune the game plan. Kevin, over to you. Thanks, Doris. Money up and in from the low block. Money's got 35. Really good awareness right there on the assist. Here's Burke. 
Not wasting any time and taking the shot and knocking it down. That's a clean look they gave him there, fellas, and he drains those. A look at the clock, a little under three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth. There's the killer two-handed slam. Absolutely, Clark. No one in his airspace on that dunk. Yeah, but come on, Kevin. The defense can't let that happen. <laughs> I hope they have let it happen more. It's fun to watch that guy fly. <laughs> Just a gift. Two points they gave up. That's awful. Burks can't get it to go. You've got to give them a lot of credit for the job they've done on the backboard. Well, they've done a lot of things right, but I agree with you, Clark. Their rebounding is right there at the top of the list. Here's money. Can't get it to go. Great D that time from Faber. Over to the wing. Works with it. And it's Martin picking him up. And that one's good by Faber. Here's Martin. Pass to Money. Outside for Martin. at six down low and again the basket is good for money money's got 18 points now here in the second half they've been getting it inside at every opportunity and getting results too it's a great formula and it's really a sign that the offense is clicking Burks can't get it to go boy oh, that's got to be deflating and disappointing to miss a wide open shot like that right in your wheelhouse Outside, Martin. Addition out to Williams. And he feeds it to Love. Rejected by Favors. And there's no doubt about this one. Playing with a lot of confidence tonight. A statement victory for the Timberwolves. Clark free throws were a big factor in this one. Yeah, you know what? It's great to get to the line, Kevin, but the other half of that is got to convert, and they did that. And a milestone win for the season. This will push their victory total to 20 wins even. Fantastic show put on. What an amazing game all around it was for money. He was doing everything right, and the points seemed to come in bunches. He still definitely had the hot hand. Whole new look on the floor for Minnesota. So it's Minnesota winning this one easily. Excellent performance in tonight's game. In case you hadn't heard, you set your career high in points. How did it feel to be on such a roll on offense? I had a lot of fun tonight, man. When your shots are falling and you're putting up points, it's, it's really a great feeling. Sometimes you're just in the zone and you gotta do what you can to take advantage of that. I was happy to make my mark on the game tonight the way I did. This is your captain speaking. We begin our descent into the Bay Area. Please prepare for landing and welcome to Oakland.